Hello everyone, my name is Angelica Dominic and I'm a trainer here at Pragmatic Works. I'm excited to introduce my new series here on our YouTube channel covering the PL300 exam and how to prepare so that you can earn the Microsoft Power BI Data Analyst Associate Certification. Now, this video is going to serve as an introduction to the series as well as an overview of what you can expect on the exam, the exam format, and what the exam experience is really like. I'll also discuss the retake, rescheduling, and cancellation policies that are put in place by Microsoft, and what you will need to do in order to maintain that certification once you pass the exam and earn that certification. Because you worked so hard to achieve that badge that you see there on the screen, so you want to make sure that you do what you need to do to maintain it. All right, let's go ahead and begin. Now, the first thing that I want to get into is just a general overview of the exam. So the number of questions on the exam, what can you expect? Any of these Microsoft exams are typically going to be between 40 and 60 questions. The PL300 will also be between 40 and 60 questions. Now, the number of questions is going to vary upon the exam form, the specific exam form that you get. And you'll also see that as the exam or as the technology changes, there will be updates made to the exam objectives. And so with that, we see that the question number on the exam is often changing. Now, again, it will be between that 40 and 60 range, so it will vary a bit. Uh, but not too much more than that. Now, the question types. The question types that you may see on the PL300 are, are going to vary. You will have, of course, your standard multiple choice questions where there will be one correct answer, but there may also be some questions where there's more than one correct answer. There's also going to be some questions that will have you drag your answer choices, these objects, over to an answer area. A lot of those questions are going to involve some sort of process or steps that you need to remember in a specific order. And so you'll often find that those drag and drop questions or build list and reorder are going to contain those movable objects where you'll move an answer choice from one side of the screen to the other. And of course, there will be more answer choices than needed in a lot of those questions. So you want to be very careful to read through the question and focus on what's actually being asked of you before you begin to move those objects into the answer area. Now, the exam duration or the length of time that you are given to complete the exam is going to be about 120 minutes, but that's going to include the amount of time that you are given or allotted to check in and to get seated and settled and to go through the uh, initial exam uh, kind of process where you will be presented with, you know, a couple of questions that are more so just to make sure you understand how to use the tool, how to use the platform, and uh, to get you checked in. We'll talk about the differences between uh, the types of exam format that you can take either in person or online at home, and we'll talk about those in just a moment. Now, the score that you need to uh, achieve, that you need to earn in order to pass this exam is going to be a 700. Now, all of the technical exams are reported on a scale of 1 to 1,000 where 700 or higher is a passing score. Now, this is a scaled score, so it doesn't mean that it's necessarily 70% of the points or that you got 70% of the questions correct those points, but more so that you achieved that scale score of 700. So the passing score is based on knowledge and skills needed. Some questions are multi-parts, have multiple answers, and so you may be able to earn multiple points on a single question. So that's what you may see there. One of the newest things to discuss with these exams is, is it open note? And the answer is yes. Microsoft recently updated some of their exams to include access to the Microsoft Learn documentation. So to access Microsoft Learn while you are taking that exam, you will see within that testing platform a button that you can click. 
It's going to say Microsoft Learn, and you'll click that button and it's going to open up a split screen and you'll see your exam on one side and Microsoft Learn on the other. Now, this experience, this open book or open note experience is designed to uh, help you, but it is by no means designed to allow you to look up every answer to every question on the exam. In fact, you will run out of time if you try to do this. So be very careful and be very mindful of that. Don't completely rely on leveraging the information and the the documentation of Microsoft Learn because you will run out of time. So something to keep in mind there. It's more so just to help you on some of those questions that are, uh, you know, have a few more layers or are a bit more difficult to answer and you can look up a few things. But keep in mind, you still have the same amount of time on the exam clock. So be very, very careful of this. Now, where and how do you take that exam? So you have two options. You can take the PL300 exam uh, online with OnView from the comfort of your home, home office, or office that you, uh, you know, report to every day. So the way that the online testing experience works with OnView is you will have to have a secure testing room. Uh, no one is allowed to enter the room while you are testing. So keep that in mind. If you have a lock that you can, um, you know, engage on the door while you are testing, that's a good idea. But at very least, you know, put it on your calendar, let your colleagues know, put a sign on the door, make sure that no one is just going to barge in and interrupt your experience. Now, when you are taking that exam online with OnView, you have a couple of things that you need to take care of. The testing room must be uh, secure and there, there shouldn't be any uh, distractions or anything that could be considered uh, of a resource that could be helping you or aiding you in any way. So although the exam is now open, no, it is still required that you secure your exam room. So there shouldn't be any notes on the wall, shouldn't be anything hanging up. Um, if your desk has, you know, an additional monitor, you even need to unplug that and place that aside. So a couple of things to keep in mind. You will need to present your government issued ID just like you would if you were taking that exam in person. It needs to include your name, a photograph, and a signature. Now, when you are checking in for your online exam, you will have to uh, submit photos of the room just to make sure that that testing room is secure, as well as a selfie, a photo of yourself. Now, I have been asked on previous exams to uh, kind of show the room after I've right before I've started the exam, but once I've started the check-in process, I've been asked after submitting those photos to even turn on my camera and do a little tour of the room. So keep in mind that, you know, there is a proctor on the other side of, of, the, of the screen, if you will, and they could potentially ask that. Now, the online experience, testing experience with OnView, you do have to have a working camera so that they can see you. And you need to be mindful of keeping your face in frame of the camera so the proctor can see you. Um, you can't block your mouth while you're taking the exam. And you also need to be careful not to uh, read the, the question aloud um, or mouth the words because it could be uh, perceived as you trying to communicate with someone else. Now, you could also take the test uh, in person at a testing facility. And I would arrive at that testing facility about 15 minutes prior to your appointment time. You won't be allowed to take any of your personal items into the testing room. So bags, purses, wallets, um, keys, uh, any personal computers or devices, anything like that needs to be left either in a locker if provided by the facility or outside of the facility in your car. So I recommend leaving as much at home as you can. Don't bring anything you don't need, your ID, um, of course, and then they typically have some lockers to provide you with. Um, but check with your testing facility because it can vary facility to facility, city to city. So keep that in mind. Now, on the exam, you will see there are four functional groups that you are expected to uh, be familiar with the content, be familiar with these concepts, as well as be able to 
understand how to demonstrate the skills inside of the Power BI desktop or the Power BI service online. So the four functional groups are prepare the data, model the data, visualize and analyze the data, and then deploy and maintain assets. Now the first three mentioned, prepare the data, model the data, and visualize the data, these three are about equally weighted, about 25 to 35%, 30% of your exam, excuse me. So these are going to be the bulk of the exam. Now you still have 15 to 20% of that exam is going to be on deploying and maintaining assets. And you can see the breakdown of the objectives and skills listed here. And this is true as of uh, today um, at the time of this recording in October of 2023. Now, Microsoft does update the exam uh, pretty frequently. At the very least, it's updated every year. But this year alone, we have seen changes to the exam skills listed on the PL300 study guide changed at least three times. So you want to keep that in mind as you're preparing for the exam. If you're scheduling that exam a few months out, make sure that you're regularly checking that study guide online. Be careful if you download a version of that study guide. Make sure that you're referencing the online study guide to see if there's any changes made and make sure that you refresh and review any skills, new skills that are added to that exam. Finally, let's discuss the retake, reschedule, cancellation, as well as the renewal policies. Now, if you happen to not pass the exam on your first try, uh, don't worry. You only have to wait 24 hours before your second attempt. Now, if you happen to fail uh, a second time and you need a third um, attempt or further, um, you will need to wait 14 days. So your first retake attempt, you will only have to wait 24 hours. Your second through fifth retake attempt, each attempt after the first retake, you will need to wait 14 days. Now, what happens if you get into the position where you've taken the exam five times and you haven't passed? Well, after taking the exam five times, you'll have to wait a full 12 months from the date of the first exam attempt in order to try to take the exam again. Now, if you're watching this video, I imagine you are taking the steps needed to prepare before scheduling and taking that exam. So I know it's probably not gonna take you five attempts. But just to uh, mention here, I have a, another YouTube video on the PL300 and preparing for the PL300 free on our YouTube channel. It's a 90-minute session that I did just last month in the month of September. So definitely check that out if you're wanting some additional content to help you prepare besides what I'm going to uh, drop in this series. Now, in addition to that, I have a full nine-hour course, a full nine-hour comprehensive course on the Pragmatic Works on-demand learning platform that you can purchase access to and then be able to take that full course. I'm also developing a boot camp, a live PL300 review boot camp that you can register and take with me and be able to prepare going through the content, going through the skills with a live instructor. So I'm really excited to share that. It's going to be out uh, at the beginning of 2024. So I'm really excited to share that with you all as well. Now, what if you need to reschedule or cancel the exam? You will want to reschedule the exam at least 24 hours prior to your scheduled appointment exam time. Now, that is also true if you need to cancel. You need to do that 24 hours prior to your exam time. If you fall within that 24-hour window, you will have to uh, show up for that appointment time or you end up just forfeiting your exam fee. So you want to be careful of this. You don't want to lose the money you paid for that exam or your company's money. Um, and there can be some additional penalties with this. So be very careful of that. What happens when you pass the PL300 exam? Now what? Well, one, share and spread the news far and wide. Download that badge. Um, sign into Credly and attach it to your LinkedIn. 
and everywhere that you can share that you've passed this exam. You've worked hard in earning that certification and you wanna make sure that you get the credit and the recognition for it. Now, you do have to be mindful of renewing this certification annually. So you will need to renew this every year and it doesn't cost any additional fee to renew. So once you pay for the exam and pass it, that is it. You won't have to pay to renew the exam. So no fees are added to renew your certification. Now, the associate expert and specialty exams are the ones that do require the renewal for the certification. Not all Microsoft exams do, but the PL300 is an associate exam, so it does require you to renew. You will complete a short assessment, shorter than the uh, initial exam that you took. And just like the PL300, it is also open book or open note, and you will have access to the Microsoft Learn information. You can begin attempting your renewal, uh, the renewal of that cert, uh, six months prior to the expiration of your, your certificate. So go ahead and start that at that six month mark, and it will renew your certification 12 months from the date of expiration of your initial certification. Now, It doesn't cost anything to renew your certification, but your retakes, if you do fail after one attempt, you will have to pay for your retake and each additional retake. So that's something to keep in mind there as well. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching this introduction to my series on preparing for the PL300 Microsoft Power BI Data Analyst Associate Exam and Certification. Feel free to drop in the comments what you are looking forward to most about this series, what you would like uh, for me to show or share. So moving forward from this point forward, every video I drop after this is going to focus on one of the four functional groups and a few of the skills within that functional group that I think would be really helpful to review and to discuss. So each of those videos is going to focus on one of those objectives within each functional group. And I will discuss the concept around the objective, making sure to present uh, a knowledge base before then looking at a question. And we'll take a look at a possible question that may be similar style to what you see on the PL300 exam. Then we'll take a look at solving it in the Power BI desktop or the Power BI service so that not only are you getting the knowledge but you are getting the uh, skill set to to be able to solve that problem. Now, let me know in the comments what you are looking forward to most or maybe what you feel like you are struggling with most as you are preparing for the PL300 exam. So drop in the comments something you are looking forward to, what you would like for me to show in one of my videos, and maybe I'll just include that in the series as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one.